This is Leith Forest. 29 minutes to two sitting in for Alan Hickey this afternoon. Time to talk about our state. Remember, comfort zone today. Sometimes these can be a little unusual and I might not necessarily... You know, have experienced what we're talking about, but today I have, and I'm delighted to welcome uh, in the general manager of uh, the China Management for the Port Adelaide Football Club, Andrew Hunter. Andrew, Good, how great are you? to see you. Very well, thank you. And Matthew Richardson, Executive General Manager of the Port Adelaide Footy Club. Richo, great to have you in as well. Thanks, Lee, for coming to be in. Here. Hey, guys, uh, 12 days. 12 days till you're in China. Yep, yeah, it's getting real now. Not long to go. <laughs> yeah. We are just talking off air, like the amount of people that are going this year is fantastic. Yeah, well, we're thinking last year was probably six to six and a half thousand people travelled across. Yep. Uh, this year, you know, four to five, so um, similar number, but a um, lot of excitement building between the, uh, amongst those people. And the sellout flag is up. I saw the AFL tweet about it very proudly. And yeah, sellout flags up, which is great. So uh, again, uh, a lot of people travelling, but also the interest from um, from Shanghai has grown. So mm. probably this year, expecting a probably a fifty fifty crowd. Last year was probably seventy thirty in terms of local. Yep. and um, Australians travelling from, from here but also the expat community whereas this year there'll be a lot more Chinese which will um, add a different flavour to the experience also. I mentioned this before as a non-Port Adelaide or Suns fan I just went along for the experience and it was so much fun. Like I would urge everyone to go along because it's it's unlike anything else. You get the game of footy but to go to China in itself which we'll talk about later uh, is just an experience. Um, Andrew, how's it changed or, or how's your your planning or what's different from the game last year, which was very much dipping the toe in the water to having another 12 months on? Yeah, look, as Richo said, a really pleasing aspect for us is that there is uh, more uh, locals coming yep. to the game, so that's that's fantastic. We've, we've developed a school program in China and a lot of those participants in the school program will be coming as well, so that's one element that we're really proud of, that uh, eventually it's levelling out and there's, there's a great local involvement. I guess the other aspect that we've worked really hard on this year is to make sure that it is a great uh, business networking event as well so that people are coming up that they're looking at uh, creating those connections with the yep. Chinese businesses not just at the game but in the events leading up to the game and I think there's going to be uh, some some great outcomes coming from that as well. Did your strategy change after the first game going into this game are these the things that you're looking at? Yeah I, th I think look when you try and sell something as a once in a lifetime experience which which we did last year you know that leaves yourself open to the the second year being being you have to create a, a new momentum for the game so we want to make this an annual event so every year we want to evolve it and make it something so that if somebody does come one year and has a great experience when they're thinking about the next year they're thinking well this is going to be something a little bit different uh, and we're going to keep building on it year by year so f for us the the strategy had necessarily to change and you know, i think we've added some extra components that will make the it exciting thing i noticed last year i was in one of the marquees and i was listening to conversations around me just to get a gauge what people were doing and it was Adelaide people doing business with Adelaide people it was people that were there selling meat and there were all different kind of businesses so I guess year after that plus as you say speaking to the local Chinese businesses as well to get that sort of relationship built yeah, so th this I think is uh, you know we've got a, a massive business networking tent, the the, the lounge that will be the, in place this year, where we're bringing in a lot of our partners from China and Australia in the one place. So I think that's uh, that's certainly an element that will build on on last year's game. But having people come together in a relaxed environment, make those connections, build those friendships yep. around is an exciting spectacle. I think it's really exciting. Where is it at with the Australian China relationship on a broad sense, and then what does football do for that as well? Well, because it's everything, isn't it? From you know education to housing to like mm. we're really sort of you know Australia and China here in the news a lot. Where does football yeah. and Port Adelaide play in all of that? Yeah, so. You know, the Australia-China relationship has traversed a really difficult moment over the last six months. I think everyone is aware of that between the two governments. It has been a, a little bit sticky, but where the game can play an important role in that is that we've got an event that will be a very high-profile event in Australia. Because of its uniqueness, will gather a lot of attention in China. So we're proposing that this event could potentially be that moment where the two countries can come together and start resetting a, a, you know, a conversation, a relationship that's been very difficult. But there are many Many other elements involved in the game as well so we're looking at encouraging tourism flows international student flows from one country to another and around sport which is a great carrier of australian values so it also has an element of 
bringing people together so we understand each other a little bit more. Richo, Port Adelaide heavily involved. Uh, can you recap again for us? And I know in different lives we've answered this question before when we're on the sports show together, but again, Port Adelaide's interest and why you want to go into China and why it's important for the club? Yeah, sure. I, I think uh, one of the challenges that we have uh, as a club is how do you um, how do you grow? Uh, I guess the the traditional football club revenue streams become, and this is not just our issue; it's an issue across the AFL industry. Other club, clubs are looking for other ways to uh, to grow their revenue, grow business, so you can invest back in football and what your core business is. And uh, I guess the, the idea of China is. Um, it creates a very different narrative for our footy club on a national on a national sense. So, um, Port Adelaide, um, authentic club, been around since eighteen eighteen seventy, got all those elements. But then you uh, you connect China to the conversation and um, and the conversations you're then having with uh, with corporates up the Eastern Seaboard becomes very different. So, yep. I mean, that's that, that's it in a nutshell, I guess. Is um, how do we how do we grow our business um, through that connection with China? Um, China's a very important trading partner for South Australia as well, so that's significant. And um, and, uh, and as Andrew touched on, I think the role that sport can play in a whole different range of you know whether it be business or government or tourism, cultural exchange, education, um, there's so many opportunities. So um, certainly you know when you think about it, we've only been it's probably the idea has been four years. Um, within four years, we've played a game uh, yep. we're going back for the second game and and that's going to continue so um everyone talks about china it takes a you know it's a long journey well um four years is a pretty small um small step but we're really excited about what the future comes i was like. excited to be there as a fan i imagine in amongst the walls of port adelaide like it's a real buzz and i mean you guys are pioneers you know you're doing something that's never been done or never been seen from let alone a sporting sort of world but you know yeah, I mean, being fortunate enough to be there last year it was um, <clears throat> it, it was an amazing feeling. Uh, I think people asked us, you know, what was it like? I think that quite often I said it was insane because yeah. it was just. Um, <laughs> I, don't, I don't think, and I think that's one of the great things about this year is that last year we didn't know what to expect. Um, the um, the events people who were organising the game at that end they didn't know what to expect. Yep. Um, security didn't know what to <laughs> know what to expect. This time we've all done it once. We've identified all the areas that we can improve it. So from a fan experience point of view, it's going to be... Um, it'll be all the great things about last year, but then there'll be a lot of improvements as well. Can you tell us that story? I love this story about the police sort of contingent that were there at Gian One Stadium when we walked in because they weren't sure really what was... From what I heard, you know, they thought it might be like a Premier League game where it could be sort of isolating fans from each other. And, of course, it was just... Uh, the best way to describe it, it was football's version of the Adelaide Adelaide Test match, like it was so social, but there was this great game as well. Yeah, it was. A, there was definitely a. Um, they didn't know what to expect. Yep. Absolutely, it was a great carnival action, and I think that's a credit to the people that actually came because when you when you got there and you walked in, I think there were two and a half thousand police <laughs> and all armed. So they certainly um, they they weren't um, they'd had no experience of yep. Australian AFL fans. Um, and to put that into perspective, I think what they have forty or fifty at a normal Crows and Port game here in Adelaide at the Adelaide Oval. So I think so. But then, thousands. as as the, I think by half time, half of those half of those guys were asleep. And um, those <laughs> the others were in the were, stand watching. They're having, having a great time, so yeah. they really enjoyed it. So, um, again, I think that was one of the great things about the experience. It was very unique. It was a real carnival atmosphere. Um, and, and this year, with the the increase in the number of local uh, local people at the game, will provide a different different mix as well. It was fun to see the world teams playing. It was fun to see the Chinese kids playing in like the little league as well, which was great. It just made it a really unique experience. Uh, the club loved it. I loved it. Your fans, you got the feedback from the people that went last year. Um, they just, I've not heard one person that went that had a bad time. Like, it was just amazing. No, overwhelmingly positive. And like I said, there were there were certainly some challenges around it, but um, the overwhelmingly it was positive. And I think, you know, we were, uh, we were so proud of our people and the way that they approached it um, because there were, you know, foreign country. A lot of them, for a lot of the people that went, it's the first time they've ever been out of Australia. And yeah. for, the, for your first trip to be to China and to Shanghai, which yep. is this, uh, you know, amazing city, uh, was incredible. But um, the way that everyone approached it was brilliant. I'm sure it's going to be um, that 
and more this time. It's a real credit to everyone involved because it is. It sounds a little bit daunting, Andrew, when you go across to China. You, the language barrier, the um, you know, you're not quite sure what to do in terms of the internet and all the rest of it. But it just seemed to go off without a hitch. So either you, you're keeping any problems you had well guarded because none of us could tell. Like it just was a normal sort of AFL experience. Yeah, I guess behind the scenes it wasn't. It wasn't a normal game. <laughs> it was uh, the week leading into the game was. Um, wasn't easy you know there are a number of things where we're dealing in a, in a very different context uh, and there was just a lack of understanding on both sides whereas this year that won't be uh, that won't be an issue but to, to see the fans actually enjoy the experience of being in China as much as the game for us yep. is is very special because again until you've actually experienced the, the culture and, and the people and a place it's very difficult to to make a judgment in Australia we don't have a great understanding of China and nor China uh, of Australia so to provide that platform where people can come together and get to know each other better is, is very special. We'll take a short break. We're talking about our state. Uh, my guest today, Andrew Hunter, General Manager, China Engagement for the Port Adelaide Football Club, and Matthew Richardson, Executive General Manager of the Port Adelaide Football Club. If you've got any questions about China, if you were there last year and experienced uh, the China experience with Port Adelaide, we'd love to know. 8223 0000. We'll talk more about this game, which is coming up very soon, the 19th of May, the second game in Shanghai for Port Adelaide against the Gold Coast Suns. Back after this. Quarter to two, sitting in for Alan Hickey. We're talking about our state. My guest from the Port Adelaide Football Club, General Manager of China Engagement, Andrew Hunter, and Matthew Richardson, Executive General Manager. The club's second game in Shanghai coming up very soon, 12 days away, the 19th of May. Port Adelaide taking on the Gold Coast Suns. We're asking if you went last year or you've got a question about this year. If you've got a question for Andrew or for Richo, 8223 0000. I mentioned I was there with Phil and Alison Hoffman and had such a great time from when you first arrived at the stadium with the, the village that was sort of set up and then the game itself, but Shanghai as a venue is amazing. Uh, you will not find a more passionate Crow supporter than uh, a man who's called in, Michael Keelan, who was also there. Good afternoon, Michael. Good afternoon, Lee. Good afternoon to your guests uh, there and the studio and all our listeners. It was a terrific trip. I mean, I, I'm a Crow supporter. I hate to say that, but Paul... Uh, he's an absolute passionate power supporter, and uh, and our daughter is also. So we took it as um, as a bit of a holiday, and uh, also very favourite team, I guess. You enjoyed the experience. We got the guys here, Matthew and Andrew, uh, Michael. For everyone, wasn't it? It was like a carnival atmosphere where you sort of had to pinch yourself at times, thinking, you know, we're seeing the AFL and sort of enjoying all of that. But then you look behind you, and there's a city of a billion people. Yeah, it's pretty hard to comprehend. If you haven't been there, but once there, you will never ever forget it. Uh, and I think Matthew helped me with my tickets, uh, and we picked them up in Shanghai, I think. And all went well. It was as smooth as. And uh, uh, the I guess the other thing too is that any Crow supporter that was there finished up barricading for power. <laughs> 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 I was in the thick of it. <laughs> Well, he was, and you would have seen that, Richard, probably. He was uh, swept up in this Port Adelaide wave. Of course, that very soon finished as soon as he got back to Adelaide, but it's yeah, hard kind exactly. of not to uh, get involved. Yeah, I um, think the other thing, too, uh, we, we actually made a, an extended holiday of it. We spent a little bit of time in Hong Kong on the way back as we felt Cathay Pacific. So we, I think we were away for about 10 days, but it felt like a month. We really saw things that we... And never expected to see it. You're right, you're talking about the millions and millions of people there. The, the size of the city is just gobsmacking. You really can't get a handle on it until you just look at it. And I'll never forget, we were there. We sort of walked out uh, on the top balcony of this restaurant and there was this river, but behind it was this amazing city. It was yeah. like something out of Star Wars. Yeah. It was incredible. Well, thank you, Michael. As um, as Phil Hopman describes, it's like the New York of Asia, Shanghai. And you're right, Michael and I had dinner uh, with his wife, Pru, and, and the Hoffmans, we had dinner at this place called M on the Bund, which is a restaurant that overlooks the skyline of... That in itself is worth going, mm. let alone a game of football on top of that. Thank you, Michael, for calling in. Paula Westlakes. Hey, Paul. G'day, guys. How are you going? Very good. That's good. Yeah, look, uh, and by the way, that M on the Bund is, uh, is a great place. Been there a couple of times myself. Um, we're, we're going again. Um, and um, one, just a couple of things from last year. I don't know um, whether this helps the guys with their planning, but we, we all had a bit of trouble finding 
took a while to wander around to find where you could collect your tickets. Um, so hopefully there's a bit more sort of signage or people pointing people in the right direction. We were sort of wandering around there for a little while, but took a little bit of time to find that. And also after the game, there was um, there was a, it was really hard to get away from the place. There was a real shortage of taxis. Um, and I, I know that's not your fault, but I'm just wondering whether you can sort of get the message around. We, you know, taxis seem to be a, there's a whole lot of group of us, and, and we really struggled for quite some time to sort of get away from the venue after it. But that's again, that's nothing. That's not your fault. It was a wonderful day. It was a fantastic day. It was just uh, there are a couple of things that we noticed um, last year. Um, you know, um, sort of initially there was a lot of people wandering around and no one knew where to go or how to get in or anything like that. Okay. Yeah. Th- thanks, Paul. And great to uh, great. Thanks for the feedback and great to hear that you're you're heading back again. Uh, one of the things that we touched on before was the security issues, and um, <laughs> that's one of the things that we've been able to improve dramatically this year. So, in terms of ticket collection, there'll be a uh, on the Thursday actually in one of the shopping centres in Shanghai. There's a uh, Australia Festival. We've got a number of so- South Australian suppliers that are coming and exhibiting there. You'll be able to collect tickets there. And then out at the ground on Friday and Saturday before the game, uh, there'll be ticket collection. It'll be really visible. It's in the, just in front of those steps. But as you come up to come up to the stadium, uh, merchandise will be available, which will, again was one of the issues that we had last year. Again, mainly mainly because of the security. And uh, and the other great thing about the game, those people that went last year, it was difficult to actually move around the stadium. Once you're inside, mm. you couldn't move from one section to the other, which again was security related. This year, there's a there's a roadway that goes around the outside of the stadium. As once you go, there'll be a perimeter fence around the outside of that. Once you're inside that, you can actually move around the outside of the stadium. There'll be a whole heap of activations uh, in the plazas, yep. um, which will make it much more much more enjoyable for the people that are at the game. Thank you, Paul, for the call. You'll have to get the Footy Express, Richo, just to have that <laughs> Footy Express or jump on the underground <laughs> straight out of uh, Shanghai. Uh, Ray sent in a text message. She just picked her tickets up uh, from Phil Hoffman. She can't wait, so she's ready to go as well. Hey, the um, Oval's going to be called or the, the arena, the stadium, which is in itself is a photo opportunity because it's this amazing stadium. It's called Adelaide Arena. Uh, that's significant, Andrew, with uh, the government's involvement there? Yeah, so the South Australian government has, is supporting the game this year, which is which is fantastic from our perspective. I think, you know, it really does allow South Australia to, to stand apart and Adelaide to stand apart. The game will get a lot of attention. We, we predict that there'll be about 9 million uh, viewers on, on television in, in China, so it's a great festival of not only of Australia, but a bit of South Australia. So, you know, we really appreciate the state government support um, and hopefully we'll be able to use this moment to, to try and um, paint a, a really beautiful picture of our home state and our home city. So the fans are excited, Richo. Ken Hinckley, David Kosh, the playing group, it's a little out of the norm. We talk about the flight to Perth being a, a fair flight. Everyone's bought in, though, haven't they, from a footy department point of view? Yeah, they have. I, I think um, one of the things that we did uh, in the footy department did really well last year, they took a group across in, uh, I think it was about November, December the year before, mm-hmm. took the leadership group across, they went over and experienced it, understood uh, and had a great time. So they've come back and really influenced the rest of the playing group. So last year they were really looking forward to it. Um, our great friends at Cathay Pacific, uh, of course, uh, you know, the boys are sitting up closer to the front and the, the back. So, <laughs> pointy um, end, yep. so, um, so all that works really well. And again, our footy department just plan it meticulously. So, so apart from the, the travel and getting there, uh, once they get there, um, the hotel out to the stadium, it's really not a lot different to what they, um, what they experience in Was- a normal away game. It was fun for the Port Adelaide fans that I was sitting with and flew back with because all the players were there. You know, like we were hanging. I think Brad Ebert had just had a baby at the time. Yeah, well, that's so right. Brad left. He uh, flew with us. Yeah, he yeah. almost uh, whacked his tracksuit on. And he was out the door. Back out, yeah. um, but again, you're right. You're seeing and mingling with players through the airport and through on the plane, uh, etc., which was fun. And we talked off air about uh, the most amazing thing for me is that the night of the game afterwards, we all walked into... Jianwan Mall, I guess mm. it would be the Rundle Mall of mm. Shanghai. Every second person was Port Adelaide, like mm. they had jumpers that you guys are wearing on today, mm. which is the most amazing yet sort of bizarre, you know, thing ever. Really, yeah. no, I found the same thing. Just want, just wandering around the next day after the game when we finally could relax. Just the amount of Port Adelaide people that were in were in town was was fantastic. Now you guys have got a partnership as well, uh, enhancing experience for Chinese students. Can you tell us about this? 
Yeah, sure. So we uh, we're doing a lot of things in this in this space in terms of tourism and, and education. We've we just recently signed an agreement with uh, UI, which is an app that's specifically designed for Chinese students coming across. Yep. And we're about to enter into a, a partnership with a university in in Adelaide, uh, which will be really exciting for us. So, you know, it's just another it's another statement that sport is is a fantastic thing in and of itself. But the things you can do around sport and the way you can uh, welcome international students into the Port Adelaide family and give them an experience of the South Australian Australian society through sport I think is is really significant so we'll keep building on those things and yep. mastering the flows of students and tourists going both ways and and hopefully play a really uh, positive role through that can we expect a few more announcements you got any other announcements up your sleeve feel free to drop them now if you want to just hold your gunpowder until what no, we'll have to hold on. I think, I think Daniel Norton will be listening into that, oh, so we don't want to take anything away from his uh, meticulously Nort. planned He's media. He's a five double A media member player. He can oh, no. share it with us. We'll do it with Rowing Bix at least three o'clock. So, hey uh, guys, great to have you both in. Uh, well done again on the Port Adelaide experience with China. It is fantastic, and um, I know speaking of Phil Hoffman uh, and Richo, I think you're involved as well. There's so many people going over with him uh, and his company as well that he, and with the all uh, sold out flag going up, people are going have a great time yeah they are we've got um of course phil hoffman travel rea travel yep. and also um tele travel yep. our three travel partners and each of those had really strong take up again this year um so yeah we're really looking forward to working with those guys and, and seeing all those people over there we've had a couple of information nights with with each of the travel groups yep. and um they're really looking forward to it do you guys get any downtime while you're over there does koshi let you look around and go up the big pearl tower or check out the french quarter or what are you or uh, straight back you know i stuck around for a day afterwards and yeah it was after the work was done and the game was success it was a, a really relaxing time i don't know if... yeah i didn't get too much of a look around this oh, time so uh, in, fact, in fact i fell asleep on a tour bus I there you go leith on the on the <laughs> day after thought I'd jump on one of those rooftop buses well, and I woke Keelan up Michael Keelan and I and Prue we hopped on a subway with about a billion people like I've never seen anything mm. like it and can I just anyone that's going there are the markets I can't it, it's the underground markets or the red market whatever it's called it's your uh, Melbourne market on steroids like the amount of bargains people are sending texts fidget spinners were the big thing back at the time <laughs> man you know, like there's so much shopping. There's uh, the the culture, the food. That was the thing too with that restaurant I mentioned, the um, M on the Bund. They were selling like Murray Bridge beef. Mm-hmm. You know, so it's all these South Australian connections throughout Shanghai. So, and the good thing I think for both of you guys as well, you'll smash the Gold Coast. Look at them; they're fatigued, they're flat. You probably don't want to say that. You don't want to footy gods, but uh, one week at a time, Leith. Come yeah, on, footy come gods. Come on, turn it up. You'll yeah, smash. You get a small game between the, between now and then. So. Yeah, well, that's true. Oh, yeah, that's going. Yeah, that's this week. Gee, you got a big fortnight. Then you got the showdown. And then you're off to China. So when do you go? Like literally straight after. I think Andrew Sunday, and I are four o'clock at the airport on the Sunday morning. So, oh, really? Yeah, straight yeah, after. We'll... Pack our bags and head straight from Adelaide over to the airport. Basking in a big showdown win and then you're off to China. So what do you got to do just before the game gets started? Just all the final touches and put everything together? Yeah, well, there's, there's I mean, because it's basically a temporary stadium, so yep. all that all that infrastructure comes in. Uh, there's a re- we've got a really big program of events in the week leading in, so yep. we've got events starting from the Thursday. There's a there's a trade event, um, gala dinner on the Friday night. Yeah, yep. and a strong government presence as well, so there'll be a lot of final details to put together for okay. um, once we know who's coming from both sides. And, yeah, beautiful. Uh, yeah, it'll be a big event. Got the Golden North uh, green tea ice cream that going over this year. I think they were doing it last year. You'll have to enjoy some of that. Hey, guys, thanks for coming in. Great to see you both, and good luck in a couple of weeks time I, i'll say it you can't say it you'll smash them and that's going to make it even better because that's that was the thing once you knew you had the win uh it was party for all andrew hunter general manager china engagement matthew richardson executive general manager of port adelaide still time if people want to find out more or get along if they want the last minute yeah absolutely. Rush. contact the club or just go to shanghai2018.com.au beautiful thanks both for coming in appreciate it thanks mate